A to Z Mysteries, Book Number Sixteen, The Panda Puzzle, by Ron Roy. Chapter One. I can't believe Green Lawn has its own pandas. Ruth Rose said. She held up her dad's camcorder. I hope I can get them on videotape. Ruth Rose always dressed in one color. Today she wore sky blue from head to toe. Ruth Rose, her little brother Nate, and her friends Dink and Josh were visiting the petting zoo. A mother panda and her baby had arrived just the day before. All four kids stood in the middle of a crowd near the panda enclosure. Dink recognized a lot of his friends from school. He waved at Officer Fallon and his grandson Jimmy. Through the skinny rails of the enclosure fence, the kids could see a cave and a pool of water. Bamboo grew beside the cave. From his pocket, Dink pulled out a folded paper. It was an issue of the Panda Paper. The front page story was all about how the pandas, Ping and Winnie, had come to Green Lawn. The headline was "Petting Zoo: Perfect Place for Pandas." I'm going to ask the editor if I can write a story about the baby panda," Dink said. Josh was chomping on an apple and holding Pal's leash. "If you do, I'll draw its picture for you," he said. "Can I play with the panda?" asked Nate. "Sorry, Nady," Ruth Rosa said. "Pandas only like to play with other pandas." Nate was on tiptoes. "I can't see," he complained. There's too many big people. There's a bench over there, Dink said. We can see better if we stand on it. The four kids climbed onto a nearby bench. Now they could see over the crowd. Pal flopped on the lawn with a big sigh and closed his eyes. The crowd stood just outside the fence. Off to one side, standing near a microphone, were two men and a woman. The kids recognized the woman. Her name was Irene Napper, and she worked at the petting zoo. She fed the animals and made sure they were safe and comfortable. She was wearing a green uniform with the words "petting zoo" stitched onto her shirt pocket. Next to Irene was a short man with spiky yellow hair. That was Tom Steele, the editor of the Panda Paper. "Who's the guy wearing the necktie?" Josh asked. The man Josh had asked about was very tan. He was whispering something to Irene Napper. "That's Flip Francis," Dink said. He showed Josh a picture in the panda paper. His grandmother gave the money to Green Lawn to build this park. Just then, Flip Francis spoke into the microphone. "Can you all hear me?" he asked. Ruth Rose turned on the camcorder and aimed it toward the microphone. Hi everyone. I'm Flip Francis," he said. "As many of you know, it was my grandmother, Winnie Fred Francis, who made Panda Park possible. Granny Win would be happy that you all came to meet little Winnie, and I'm pleased that her money went to such a good cause." He turned to Irene Napper. "Irene is taking good care of our new arrivals," he said, handing her the microphone. "Thanks, Flip," Irene said into the mic. I just want to say that I've loved getting to know little Winnie. She's a happy, playful baby. Irene passed the mic to Tom Steele. "Hello, everyone," the editor said. "As you know, the Panda Paper has a very small staff. Me, I could use some help. I'd love to print your stories, poems, or pictures about pandas." Tom Steele grinned, "But I can't pay you anything." Everyone in the crowd laughed. Just then, a black and white face appeared inside the cave's entrance. The crowd quieted. Suddenly, the mother panda moved into the sunlight. Her head swiveled around as she lifted her nose into the air. Suddenly, she charged the fence and threw her body against the metal rails. Tom Steele, Irene Napper, and Flip Francis leaped back. People at the front of the crowd jumped back too. What's wrong with her? Ruth Rose asked, catching it all on videotape. Ping stared through the bars of the fence. 
After a minute, she waddled back into her cave. A man in a green uniform hurried over to Irene Napper. Irene handed him her keys, and the man unlocked the fence gate. Carefully, he crossed over to the cave, knelt down, and looked inside. Then he reached in and pulled something out. To Dink, it looked like a round alarm clock. A small piece of paper was tied around it with a string. The man relocked the gate and handed the object to Irene. She removed the paper and silently read what was written on it. This is so weird, Josh whispered. What's going on? Irene stepped back to the microphone. Dink noticed her hand was shaking. This is a ransom note, Irene told the crowd. Winnie has been kidnapped. Chapter 2 Kidnapped? Ruth Rose gasped. Everyone in the crowd began talking at once. Officer Fallon ran to talk to Irene. Where is Winnie? Nate asked. I want to see Winnie. Winnie has gone away for a little while, Ruth Rose told her little brother. Where? The four-year-old insisted. Ruth Rose put her arm around Nate's shoulders. We don't know yet, she said. Officer Fallon stepped up to the microphone. Folks, you might as well go home, he said. We have every reason to believe that Winnie is safe. We'll do our best to get her back. Tom Steele, Flip Francis, and Irene Napper left Panda Park together. Officer Fallon and Jimmy began walking around the outside of the panda enclosure. The crowd slowly wandered away. What a lousy thing to do, Josh said, helping Nate down from the bench. What's going to happen to Winnie? Ruth Rose asked. Doesn't she need her mother to feed her? Dink glanced at the story in the panda paper. It says Winnie's almost six months old, he said. She's eating by herself now. Come on, said Ruth Rose. Let's go talk to Officer Fallon. The kids caught up with the police chief and his grandson outside the fence behind the bamboo forest. Pal flopped on his belly and stuck his nose through the fence rails. Nate sat next to him and patted the dog's head. Hey kids, Officer Fallon said. Some situation, eh? The kidnappers want a million bucks for Winnie, Jimmy Fallon blurted out. Jimmy, his grandfather said. Is it true? Ruth Rose asked. Officer Fallon nodded. I'm afraid that's what this says, he said. Holding the note by its edges, he let the kids inspect it. Josh read the note aloud. Leave one million dollars in the hollow tree on Goose Island by midnight tonight. No chicks or you'll never see Winnie again. A million dollars? Ruth Rose cried. Where would Greenlawn get all that money? As I recall, Officer Fallon said, there's still over a million left from the money Winifred Francis left. The kidnapper must know that. Dink examined the note. What does the kidnapper mean by tricks, he asked. He means we shouldn't put any police officers on the island to catch him when he comes for the money, Officer Fallon said. Or tamper with the bills so we can chase them. Ruth Rose studied the ransom note. These letters were cut out of a newspaper, she said. Yes, Officer Fallon said, which means we can't chase the note. Suddenly, Pal let out a wolf. He stuck a paw through the fence and began scratching. Josh bent down to see what Pal was doing. Guys, look, he said. Partly hidden among the bamboo stalks was something shiny. It's a knife, Jimmy Fallon said. Officer Fallon got down on his knees. It sure is, he said. He scratched Pal behind the ears. Good dog. Officer Fallon stuck a long arm through the fence and picked up the knife. He brought it out, being careful not to cut himself. The knife had a thin blade and a fat handle made of cork. Looks like a fishing knife, Officer Fallon said. 
If the knife gets dropped in the water, the handle will float. Can I have it, Grandpa? Jimmy asked. Afraid not, Jimmy, Officer Fallon said. This is evidence. He drew a clean handkerchief from his pocket and carefully wrapped the knife. Hey, look at this, Josh said. He reached through the fence and pulled back a stalk of bamboo. The top had been sliced neatly off. There's more, Josh said, pointing through the fence. Someone cut a bunch of this stuff. Maybe the kidnapper took some bamboo to feed Winnie, Ruth Rosa said. At least she won't be hungry, Josh said. That explains the knife, Officer Fallon said. With a struggling panda in his arms, the kidnapper probably never knew he dropped it. Officer Fallon reached into his pocket. He pulled out the object that had been found in Ping's cave. Know what this is? he asked. It looks like an alarm clock, Dink said. It is, Officer Fallon said. It's an alarm clock with the volume set on loud. I'm guessing the kidnapper tossed it into Ping's cave, knowing the pandas would run out when the thing went off. He probably grabbed Winnie as she came out of the cave. And if we want her back, Dink said, Green Lawn has to pay a million dollars. You're right, Officer Fallon said, unless we find the bad guy first. But we only have till midnight, Ruth Rose said. She looked at her watch. That's only 12 hours from now.